counselors, Councillor Latonya Tate, who is the chairperson of our Public Safety Committee, and Councillor Darrell O'Quinn, who is chairman of our Transportation Committee. This evening we'll have an opportunity to not only hear your concerns, but also to have a review of the general code of the City of Birmingham as it relates to towing. And we'll be moving through the agenda with that purpose. At this time, it is my pleasure to turn the meeting over to Councillor O'Quinn, who will let us know just how did we get here this evening and give you some ideas of how we will proceed. Dr. O'Quinn. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so one of the reasons why we wanted to do this meeting this afternoon is that over the past six months to a year, the number of complaints that we have gotten about um, towing, especially in the downtown area, has uh, increased dramatically. And <clears throat> uh, I believe the last time that this particular section of city code um, was addressed was back in 20, 2013. And city attorney uh, Julie Bernard is going to go through that with us. Um, so tonight's conversation is, is really about um, the code portion. I know that a lot of the complaints that we have received um, are not necessarily about the code, but more related to business practices. However, tonight's conversation is only about business practices from the standpoint of what the, the code allows for. So another way of saying that is tonight's conversation is about the city ordinance and, and what is allowed or not allowed within the context of the city ordinance. So, um, but getting back to what I initially started this with was that over the past year to six months, we've gotten um, a lot more frequent complaints. And part of the reason for that is that uh, the way we as individuals in the city uh, use paved parking lots um, has changed uh, due to the payment system. Um, used to be the case that with these privately owned paid parking lots, um, there was a, a kiosk and clear signage at the front of the, the lot uh, communicated uh, that information. And, but now um, we've moved to electronic parking payments and um, usually you're, you're paying for your parking from the front seat of your vehicle or while you're walking down the sidewalk. So um, there needs to be uh, some changes uh, to the ordinance related to just how we do things in modern day Birmingham. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to ask Julie Bernard um, to sort of give us an overview of the current city code and some of the things that um, she is suggesting that we, some of the changes that she's suggesting that we make. Noting that this is only the beginning of a conversation about two particular sections of the code. Um, we anticipate that there will be additional opportunities for public input uh, related to what we want to do. Hi, uh, Julie Bernard. I serve in the office of the city attorney. And thank you, Councilor Quinn. Thank you, Madam President and Councilor Tate. Um, the ordinance that's in place, there's, there's an attempt to balance in this and, and, and an understanding that the existing ordinance applies to a lot of activities, not just the non-consensual towing that is really the subject of a lot of the complaints. It applies to anybody who operates a tow truck or, or might be called a record service um, in the city requiring permits for you know, public safety 
um, you know, we require permitting for public safety. The, so that applies to any, anybody who might be towing the vehicle in the city. And as far as the non-consensual towing, um, there, we do have authority for, for all other kinds of tows, we don't have authority to regulate the price, the price route or service. But we have specific authority to regulate the price of non-consensual towing. So that's where a lot of this starts, is from a public safety standpoint, and only as to non-consensual towing, what rates can be charged. Um, so that's the premise. This is an attempt to balance because a private property owner, if someone, if something trespasses onto their property, they have the authority, the right under common law to remove something that trespasses on their property. So they do have the ability to remove that trespassing property, but the public has the right to have adequate notice of the activities, what are the regulations and requirements for parking on a particular piece of property, and what happens if they don't follow those requirements, and if they do get towed to be treated fairly, you know, to be treated with respect and fairly on the, on the other side of recovering their vehicle. Um, there is also, you know, the concern that as we regulate that we don't over-regulate so that there's not, nobody wants to provide parking in the city of Birmingham because we want people to have the opportunity to come downtown and enjoy the businesses, the restaurants, the bars, the activities that occur um, downtown. So that's just a general overview of really what the, the point that the ordinance comes from. Um, I'm not going to try to get, go into a detailed review. Um, again, I think the most, it, the issue of most concern is the non-consensual towing. And to some extent, although it doesn't happen anymore, booting, which was the, kind of the genesis of a lot of these issues in the city. Um, what I have been doing over the last two months is working with a team from BDOT and in OCA, I have another team member from OCA who has been helping to review and edit the existing ordinance and suggest updates to it. Um, and we've been working with Ms. Christine Argo in, the, in BDOT, and she's not able to be here tonight. Um, <clears throat> but we've been working, we've been discussing for about two months, and we have a draft, um, as Councillor Quinn, as you said, it's not the final draft. We've gotten it to a point that we feel we can start getting feedback from the council, you know, and getting input and having these discussions. So the primary approach, one, let me make this point, is to update the towing. And there's a long-standing ordinance that's been on the city books that to my knowledge was not being enforced when I came to the city 20 years ago and as nobody's ever really picked up, we attempted to move some pieces of that into the booting and towing ordinance in 2013, but seeing what's going on now with the changes in the payment system, the way that parking lots operate, um, one of our recommendations is that we pull out that as chapter 10-15 in the city code, and it deals with the regulation of paid parking lots, commercial parking lots. And so what we're doing is dusting that off and giving it some updates and um, would put that under BDOT's regulation. Uh, part of that has always required that parking lots post their rates up front um, and you know, requires that the parking lots be maintained, you know, various things like that. So we're recommending to do that for one thing and BPD, the police department, would remain over the towing services, over the permitting and the regulation of those activities and responding to those complaints. BDOT would deal with the permitting of commercial parking lots and making sure the signage that it meets other requirements of the, of the ordinance. Um, that gives us two angles to look at the business practices that are going on. Um, gives opportunity to get more transparency as to some of the business practices that are going on. And um, 
So that, that's the big picture, what we're thinking and what we want to talk about. Um, <clears throat> overall, in updating the towing ordinance, um, is going through for clarity to update. There are some places that, you know, you think this applies to both booting and towing, that maybe it's in the booting section, didn't get clearly referenced in the towing section, but should be referenced there as we've gone through, you know, found things that, yes, these things need to be uh, applied to both types of businesses make some rearrangement, add some language to get that clarity. Um, as you mentioned, in reviewing the complaints that have been coming in, the mobile payment system has been significant in the complaint, in the increase in complaints from what we see. Uh, you know, people mistakenly putting tags in, uh, not having their new tag on, just various issues. So this ordinance will recognize that mobile payments happen now. They weren't happening in 2013. And uh, what we want to see, and I, I didn't bring my phone up here, I know there's one parking lot for sure that I can go onto the mobile app and pull up and it will give me a warning. It gives me like three statements. And before you leave, make sure your tag's on your car, make sure you got the right tag number in. If you don't, you'll be towed. Uh, what we want to see is that type of warning applied to all mobile payment systems, uh, even maybe improving the warning. But that replaces, as you said, people aren't getting out, walking to a pay station and paying where they would see a sign. They're sitting in their front seat and getting out and leaving the car. So we need to require that there be some kind of notice built into those apps. So that's, so that's one of the major things we want to do. Um, we are we are recommending considering a limitation on when a tow can happen, and you know that the minute you walk around the corner, your tow your car shouldn't be towed. That there's a 15 minute grace period that maybe gives somebody the time to finish that payment while they're walking down the street, or go, oh, wait, I forgot, you know, any, anything or you know something that triggers. Um, Another thing we've seen, I've seen it in a couple of complaints, is that someone's able to show that they paid and that they still have time on the payment. And um, but so require, if you have a receipt and you can show that you were legally parked in that space, you had paid, there may have been some error, but you paid, that vehicle has to be released without requiring payment. Um, I, I think that will, cause some second thoughts about towing and making sure that you're towing in the right circumstances. Um, it is important that everybody realize, make sure your, your tag is correct, make sure you've done everything correctly in the app, but you know, mistakes happen and it, it becomes kind of harsh um, in some of the circumstances I've read. Well, Big Dot is working on redesigning the signs um, the way they are, we've looked at some examples and to update, modernize, make sure the signs are more eye-catching where they are required on the lots. Uh, and improving the enforcement, again, I mentioned distributing the burden between the police and, and BDOT. Um, and we're working on some tools, discussions with BPD uh, to help them better document violations and uh, that we build a record. Uh, it's important that complaints go to the right place, that the police department you know, receives those complaints and that we get records made um, when there's a violation of those. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, got some instances of things we want to emphasize. For one thing, uh, the current ordinance requires that the, the permittees wear their ID tag. They're supposed to have a photo ID tag that's issued by the police and they are supposed to wear that at all times and they are supposed to identify themselves if they are asked. So um, we want to, to emphasize that. And adding just some language that you need to behave professionally and respectfully. Um, so, um, I think, I think those were primarily the main points that I wanted to make. I do want to look, Ms. Argo made an, did an overview of what we've done. I do want to look at that 
quickly to see if there's anything um, that I haven't mentioned. Um, we're adding some requirements. We have seen some complaints, and I think Councillor Quinn has referred one where someone said that when they approached the vehicle that they smelled marijuana smoke from the people who had been, you know, who were working for the, the, that particular company. So we're adding some language about not operating while you're impaired, and with influence and impaired. Um, I think those are those primary, I mean, just overall, it's clarifying some of the language, clarifying some points, trying to tighten up some, some of that in the existing coordinates and adding back in a requirement for paid parking lots to be permitted from the city and operate a particular way. Okay. Um, there, I just wanted to uh, mention it appears from the, the sign-in sheet that there are several um, folks that represent uh, the paid lots here. And I noticed in the summary that you sent us um, that one of the other things that you, I don't think you've mentioned yet is um, adjusting the insurance requirements, but that would apply to the, the towing that applies to correct. the towing. There is in the existing ordinance that has not been enforced, there is an insurance requirement for parking lots. So okay. we haven't made any recommendations specifically on that so far, but that is in being carried over from the existing ordinance. Okay, thank you. All right, at this time, um, we are going to move into hearing from uh, the folks who have signed up to, to make comments. Um, again, the, the context of tonight's conversation is really about um, the ordinance or the two ordinances related to towing and booting and um, the separate ordinance that's related to private paid parking lots. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind uh, as you come to the mic. And um, please note that you will have uh, three minutes. Um, when I'm going to try and be courteous, so when you have 30 seconds left, I'll flash a yellow card at you. And when your time is up, I'll flash a red card at you. So um, just in the spirit of being courteous and trying to keep everybody on track as far as time, uh, that's how we'll proceed. So, trying to read the handwriting here. John Parker with Dave's Pub. Hey there, thank you for having me. Um, I own a business in uh, Councilwoman Smitherman's district and I believe also Councilwoman Abbott's. Um, and I appreciate y'all taking our time to, to hear, hear public opinion on this. Um, I'll, I'll stick to the topic of the ordinances. And um, I've noticed that the signs um, are, are something that could be, you know, um, made less ambiguous. Uh, near one of my businesses, there's a lot that says no overnight parking. And, um, and not to be rhetorical, but what time do you think a cutoff for that phrase means, uh, anybody? But what time would you think that is? Any, any guesses what, what the cutoff for towing is when they say no overnight parking? Any guess? Nothing. Uh, it, it means 2 a.m. according to Parking Enforcement Systems Inc., which by no definition otherwise it would say that. So you have people that are visiting town, coming in uh, from out of town, visiting from over money, over the mountain, wanting to put money into the city of Birmingham, and they have to, they're, they're met with an ambiguous sign that has an arbitrary 2 a.m. cut off. Why not just say 2 a.m.? We're gonna, they're, they're sitting out there at 2 a.m., or 1.50 till, and they, they will tow a car exactly at 2 o'clock in the morning. And it's not just patrons that I, I meet with, it's people are furious every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night when their car's towed. It says overnight parking, and then, yeah, we know. 
Um, but uh, the, the you can overhaul, um, change things to act, have these folks act professional. But uh, I mean, I don't know how you're going to enforce that too much. People are going to be mad, and people will just end up dead if these people have, you know, these wild reins and can just steal people's cars. So uh, I, again, I appreciate y'all's time. Um, I see it every single day. Uh, a tow truck. Uh, pick somebody up, and I would love to, to talk more about it, but I will keep it brief because um, more people need to talk. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good feedback. Uh, next up, we have Nicholas Ciencio. I don't know if that's your last name too, though. Um, but no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Thank y'all for uh, the time tonight. I just wanted to keep it brief since there's another Nicholas waiting in line. Um, I think that it is really serious that a lot of the towing that's is specifically targeting people that might not actually have the ability to pay for higher rates, and so now they're having to pay for you know leaving their car at five minutes or ten minutes and uh, having to get it from the impound. Um, it's particularly unfair, especially when people are patronizing certain businesses that it says overnight parking. So I just really want to reiterate that point. Having explicit language would be particularly helpful, uh, not only for people coming from overnight, but people coming from expand opportunities for transit in certain areas where some of these aggressive parking lots were, it could help mitigate the demand for them. Uh, I think even having a transit around public parking could be particularly helpful because if there's the concern that these companies are not going to be respectful and honest, then I think the city should do everything within their authority to at least use the market to deter them from and maintained by the Birmingham Parking Authority. And I think that you would find their rates very competitive to what you might pay for on a privately owned paid parking lot. Uh, so, but noted, thank you for your comment. Next up is Mr. Uh, Council Woods. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For clarity, I just wanted to to ask, are we saying that there are there are signage labeled as overnight parking, but it's being towed starting at 2 a.m.? That, that's that's the interpretation that I, I heard. That yes. Um, the the sign implies that overnight parking is allowed, but it's actually cut off at 2 a.m. Is, is what I'm, if I'm hearing correctly. That's what's being communicated to us. All right. Mr. M Michael Ewan, McEwen. McEwen, thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you for holding this here. Hold the mic up. Oh, sorry. Just put you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Pull it up. There we go. Um, thank you for holding this hearing to hear what we have to say on this. I'll keep this brief as I'm um, not specifically uh, damaged at all by any of the particular conversation that's going on. It's just the, uh, the uh, forgive me, I yield the remainder of my time. Okay.
LaShawn Thompson. Uh, as stated, I'm LaShawn Thompson, and uh, I don't want to kind of confuse things, but uh, my concern was my son, not me, <laughs> was towed, um, and I think it was in regards to overnight parking issues. Uh, he was out, and it was past 2 a.m., and came back, and his car was booted. So again, the signage. We need to have more clarity with that so people will understand is this what time frame are we working under? Whether intoxicated or not, somebody in the group should, you know, keep up with that. Also, my concern was a story that was aired on the news on May the 9th about calls for a better parking system. And my concern was that. Rev. Birmingham was uh, the CEO, was being interviewed for that. And in the course of the interview, it stated that the Birmingham Parking Authority manages more than 8,000 parking spaces in the city center. That concerned me because I'm saying, well, if we have over 8,000 parking spaces in the city center, why are so many people getting towed? They should be able to park anywhere. And there was a map that was on TV that displayed, I don't know how many red dots, but you couldn't really see the uh, roadways in which these lots were located. Me, I called the uh, Parking Authority of Birmingham, and I inquired about these 8,000 spaces. And I was told that Birmingham only had eight parking decks, not eight parking, 8,000 parking spaces. So that was a concern because this was being aired on the news. And if I'm taking it this way, maybe someone else is getting the information that way too, that we've got this overabundance of parking spaces and we've got Rev Birmingham saying, well, you know, it's too many dead spaces and we're going to just try to see if we can revitalize with hotels and other venues. And I'm saying, well, why do you want to do that? And you got people being towed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so just for clarity, the Birmingham Parking Authority does have its six decks and seven decks and uh, three surface lots collectively if you add all the parking spaces up in, in those facilities, it's a little over 8,000 parking spaces. Um, and, you know, just mentioned that the parking authority, the interview likely occurred in the context of the announcement that the parking authority is doing a uh, strategic plan. Um, so um, I, th I think that that was the context of those comments. All right, next up. Chris Grimes, Crimes. Speak up. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, just for clarity, I just want to let you guys know that we're a parking company based in Atlanta. We're not in Birmingham, besides doing ballet at St. Vincent's. Um, just this is national parking? Yes, national parking. Yes. So I want to come before you, and um, like I said, I'm honored to uh, speak to you guys about the, um, the issues. Like I said, I've, uh, I saw it on the news. And uh, I understand the difficulties that business owners face when it comes to parking management, and we know the importance to provide the best services and whatnot. Um, so I had to put this together because I just saw it last night. But um, I would like to present a solution that will benefit everyone. National Parking is a company that thrives on customer satisfaction. Uh, like I said, we're currently at St. Vincent's, and uh, right now 
we range about a, a score, a scale of one to five. We're at 4.9 right now. Um, haven't had anything less than that. And like I said, there we offer valet. Uh, we had shuttles at one point. We uh, dialed that back. Um, deck management, service slots. And I just wanted to introduce it. I don't think many people know that we're here in Birmingham because we're only at St. Vincent's. But um, we can offer solutions to businesses. Uh, the city, if you would like. Um, like I said, I saw this on the news last night and uh, I'm a regional manager in the area. And I just want to let people know that we are here and you can reach out to us. Um, like I said, we're based in Atlanta. We have about 80 accounts. And uh, we started in Birmingham maybe January of last year. And uh, just want to let everyone know we're here and we can offer solutions as well. Um, the way we would actually operate is you hire us we will um, call the tow companies and everything will be justified. Whereas, you know, if you let a, a tow company who doesn't really focus on customer service and uh, your citizens, well, they're going to do what they want. Uh, like I said, we're more customer client focused. And I just want to let everyone know that we're here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have. Matthew Lyons. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Lyons. Uh, I was recently towed by, the, by Parking Enforcement Systems. Uh, my experience was profiled in AL.com in late May. Uh, I know you want to talk about the code, and I'll get to that, but first, um, a few things. Uh, first, let me, let me commend the city for adopting the Park Mobile app. I think it's made parking in, in Birmingham much easier. Uh, second, let me say I don't want to put towing companies out of business. When your car is broken down on the side of the road, the tow, cup, tow company is your best friend. Uh, I also recognize that sometimes cars need to be towed. Uh, when I lived in Philadelphia, you know, if a car was on the road at 6 a.m. blocking a key artery, that was keeping people from getting to work. That being said, what I'm against is predatory towing, which takes advantage of the citizens of Birmingham only to enrich the owners of companies like Parking Enforcement Systems. I was at a meeting downtown at the Economic Development Partnership of Alabama for economic uh, investment and opportunity zones. I parked in a park mobile lot. I paid for three hours of parking on the app. I returned to find my car towed. I was only 30 minutes late. Um, this was a very stressful experience, and I think it's very bad for the image of Birmingham. As an investor, I'm trying to grow Birmingham. I fund startups and I encourage businesses to move to Birmingham. Predatory towing sets these efforts back. When your car is towed, you feel violated. It, since my car was towed, I'm more hesitant to come downtown. I'm more likely to have a meeting somewhere else. People have heard about my story and my friends feel the same way. They don't want to come downtown and, and risk getting towed. Another reason predatory towing is bad for Birmingham is that it creates a negative spiral of events. Most people live paycheck to paycheck. According to the Federal Reserve, only 32% of Americans can cover a $400 expense. I was fortunate that I could pay my fine and get my car back right away. But that's not the case for everybody. And when they can't get their car back, they lose access to transportation. When someone loses access to transportation, it can lead to job loss. It can lead to other financial difficulties. It means kids cannot be picked up at school. It means parents can't be taken to the doctor. Fines are one thing. I may not like it when I get a parking ticket, but at least it's a fair system. In this system, the towing company is the judge and the jury. And they are deciding a punishment that is disproportionate to the crime. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> Latasha Simpson. Hello, everyone. Hello. This 
particular meeting is very timely. I just learned about it today from my sister. I am a future business owner, hopefully, within the city of Birmingham. I'm opening an event venue downtown um, a couple of days ago, and I'm here every day working to try to get that center open. A couple of days ago, I was at lunch, well, dinner after hours, picking up something to eat, and within 10 minutes, my car was towed. It was $160 uh, that I had to pay. I paid it. I was very upset. I was angry about having to pay it, but I paid it. Um, but it got me to thinking, on the street that my venue will be on, there's really no parking. Um, there are several business owners on 4th Avenue North, and everybody uses the same parking area. My event space will hold up to 100 people, and so there will be need to be um, in doing my parking study, a minimum of about 50 cars that we would need to have spaces for. Um, I actually walked over to the parking authority today, not even knowing that this meeting was taking place, to try to figure out where I could have a place for my folks to park, even after doing the parking study. And no one was able to tell me who was in charge of the lot that I was asking about. I was told, I called the tax, um, area and I was told that it was owned by the city of Birmingham but nobody could say okay you talk to this person so for me my fear is, is if I open this business if I have these people coming in pouring in money into the city and they park in a space they don't know where to park is that going to make them subjected to this predatory towing practice so um, you know like I said it's very timely for me I'm hoping that I might be able to find out a little bit more today about how I go about making sure that I have marked spaces for um, the folks who would be attending my business. I'd also like to talk about possibly removing meters from our street. It is the only parking that that street has that's available and cars are generally stacked on any given day trying to get in parking spaces and then to have to worry about, okay, what do I pay? How much do I pay to run in and out? of the, the facilities that are on that street is, you know, concerning. Um, so just trying to figure out, thank you, where my folks park when they come to my business and not having to worry about being towed is important to me. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up we have Shelly Smith. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I found out for, about this meeting uh, yesterday from one of my clients. I am Shelly Smith. I'm the market president for premium parking uh, here in Birmingham, and we have um, several locations throughout the downtown area. Um, my suggestion is going to be, uh, according to your ordinance, it, part of it says that no one else can, it says ticket. Um, the reason I bring that particular item up is because if you boot, if you tow, it stops you from being able to go home. You come outside from dinner or a movie or whatever you've done and your car is either gone or inoperable. If you allow someone to get an invoice for maybe not paying if they don't pay or maybe something happened technically where it doesn't show up and they end up getting a ticket, that can be negotiated. You can call me, I can say, oh yeah, I see that you paid, let me take care of that ticket for you. And that goes away. It's less invasive, it's less of a problem to have fixed, there's someone that you can call, there's a place to go for an appeal. But if the ordinance says I can't send an invoice out or I can't um, do that on a private lot, then I'm left with booting and towing. So if we can upgrade that part, then you might not have as many tows to happen. Of course, towing is always going to be there. There's going to be somebody there who doesn't want to pay, um, who's going to continue to not pay, or you might have people broken down. There's a lot of reasons to tow people. So again, I'm one of those folks who doesn't want to get rid of the towing industry. I just want it to be um, updated 
since you haven't done it since 2013. And in the here and now where you pay on an app, you also end up with a, an electronic uh, punishment, I guess, if you don't do what's required, or if something goes wrong, it's an electronic thing, which is much easier to fix than somebody getting stuck in the rain or in the cold or something like that, and their car being gone. Mm -hmm. So that's a solution that we might think about in the uh, redo of the ordinance, and I just wanted to suggest that today. Um, I thought it was pretty um, interesting that one of my clients thought I should be here tonight, so I come on her behalf. Um, she owns lots, and she doesn't want to see the people towed. She doesn't want to you know, I don't want to tow people. I don't want to leave somebody stranded. This keeps them from that happening. So um, I know that that is something, ticketing is something that um, I've had some limited conversation with Attorney Bernard about. Mm -hmm. um, but in a hypothetical situation uh, where what you're suggesting would be allowed, um, what would be your recourse if that ticket went unpaid? It goes on the credit. Okay. We can't connect into their driver's license or anything like that if we don't have the authority to do that, but it can go on their credit. It's just an unpaid bill. Okay. That's my suggestion. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. James Sasser. Good evening, Madam Chair, Councilor Quinn. Thank you for doing this. I'm a practicing lawyer and have been for 40, more than 40 years, but I'm not here in the capacity as a lawyer. I'm here because, as an individual because this predatory uh, towing happened to me personally back uh, uh, about a month ago down on 2nd Avenue North. And so I have personal experience of this happening, and of course once I, that happened to me, I was livid about it because I had paid through the uh, Park Mobile app gone to dinner at a nice restaurant on 2nd Avenue, had a nice dinner and walk out and my car's gone. What I had not done is put my new, my, the car I'm now driving's tag number in. But I paid my $9.33 and then I took the Uber to go over to the 5th Avenue South lot and then was informed it'd take me $160 to get my car back. I showed the, the gentleman there, I paid $9.31. Yes, that's not the right tag number. Well, it's my car. I have a key fob here. The area, the, the code on the parking lot, same parking lot, that's my car. I didn't get the basis of my bargain. I paid for parking. And so here we go about technology is great until it doesn't work. And I came up with that. I'm sure people, I think it's original for me, and it really came up through COVID when we had Zoom hearings and Zoom meetings. And they work fine to a limit. And, the, and I'm sure the Park Mobile app works fine, but there are some pitfalls. I was certainly encouraged by um, Ms. Bernard's comment about if, if a person can show that he or she has paid, then he sh or she should not be charged $160 to get their, their vehicle out of an impoundment, which is five blocks away from where to it towed it. So, I'm encouraged by the council willing to, uh, to take this matter up. After this has happened to me, I've heard numerous people had this issue, and it does have a cause of downtown issue, to have a bad, a bad image issue. I love to come back downtown and have a dinner, going to do a concert or something, but it discourages people from coming downtown because that is ridiculous for something like that to happen. Of course, I'm getting, and I'm, my three minutes is about up, but I, I, there's a number, I, I, I've raised, some cane there that night. I said, who can I talk to about this? And I was given a number. It is Parking Enforcement Systems, Inc. And I, I said, well, I want my $180 back. Well, I can't do that. I said, well, why not? Well, Park Mobile App, that money goes to the owner. Okay, fine. Uh, I didn't know the Parking Enforcement Systems, Inc. was a towing service until later on. Said, but you, they could have given me my $160 back. But they chose not to. So I don't know what you can do about those kinds of things. Obviously, the, Ms. Bernard's um, comment about maybe changing the ordinance that allows for a situation like I was in and like numerous people um, I've talked to that actually paid, that may put a wrong number in or a wrong letter or in a different car, but they should get some relief. So thank you for your time. 
Thank you. Um, yes, and that's uh, been a very common issue that folks haven't replaced their tag identification in the part payment app, but that's something that we're trying to address in the ordinance changes that are being suggested. Uh, next up, we have Paul Godby. Uh, good evening. Um, I have not had any personal problem with parking, but I have been uh, watching the situation for a number of decades. Principally, the towing companies in New York City are pretty bad. They go around and snag cars out of um, uh, expired parking spots, uh, tow zones, a variety of things that they just seem to almost do it arbitrarily. In one instance, when they towed a car, there was a man had his 90-year-old uh, mother sitting in there, so she got towed away with the car, too. Um, but um, I think there's a number of issues I've, I've made these suggestions here, and if we can incorporate these things, it might make the overall situation a little bit better. Uh, the towing companies cannot own the lots that they tow from. This has turned out to be an issue because then it's more predatory. And then no employee or business owner can have any financial connection between the parking lot and the tow company. They have to be completely separate. Um, and then the tow companies cannot police or monitor the lots themselves because this would then be a conflict of interest. As we've heard tonight, this is one issue that's come up over and over again. The lot owner would have to be the one to call the tow company to come. Uh, and then the electronic software apps, again, we've heard this tonight, um, uh, in dealing with electronics, I know that sometimes networks don't connect, you push the wrong button, uh, some systems not updated, servers don't update in time, so information can be lost. And so the paper trail of this, like we just heard with this gentleman, would still take a precedent over the electronic apps. And I know it's going to take some time to work out, though. And then um, the uh, tow truck companies also need to be responsible um, in case there's any criminal complaints or civil uh, penalties that they incur. Because that's one issue that a lot of people have brought up. Well, them taking the cars like Grand Theft Auto right there, but they get away with it. So this is another aspect. I know that's a bigger legal issue, but this is one thing to go on. And then, as you just brought up about the tickets, it might be possible to first ticket the car, and if it stays there till the next day or something, then it can be towed. There's always be uh, situations like a person can park, they go somewhere, then they have a medical emergency, they're taken to the hospital, they can't come back to the car at that time. So uh, this would cover uh, a lot of issues like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I do want to speak to the um, conflict of interest. That is something that's uh, addressed in, in the ordinance that um, the owner of the parking lot, you know, can't have those types of financial conflicts. So um, that, that issue is specifically addressed. All right. Next up, we have Megan Richards. Um, I want to say, first and foremost, this is my first time that I've parked in downtown Birmingham since February. And that is because I was wrongfully towed. Um, I was towed after I was parked in a lot for around six to eight minutes. And I want to say, too, that um, a lot of the ideas that Attorney Bernard has come up with, I think those are great ideas. I think they'll really nip in the bud some of the issues that we've been seeing. Um, I also took it upon myself to found a Facebook group where peoples of the community can talk about the experiences that we've had. I was going to share some of those experiences, but thankfully a lot of people have showed up and spoken about a lot of those. One experience that I've heard of, though, through trying to cultivate research has been people who weren't necessarily directly impacted by being towed, but their car was damaged because the person next to them was towed. Um, and so I think when we, you know, there are 
different kind of damages that could take place the way that this is currently in place. Um, I also want to say that Birmingham is such a vibrant community and the way it stands now, I think it's really hurting the economy um, because people like me live 10 minutes away and they don't want to come back here because my $20 dinner turned into a $180 dinner and that's not really feasible for most people in this economy. So. I think it's great that y'all are having this conversation. I think all the steps that we've talked about um, to revise the ordinance are excellent. But again, I would hate to see our economy suffer, especially with everything that y'all and Mayor Woodfin are doing, and especially hearing the businesses and investors that want to come to town, and then they're hearing about these issues, and I hope they're not having second thoughts about that. So I appreciate y'all's time, and I hope we come to a resolution for this. Thank you. Bernie Smith. Madam President, Councillors, thank you all for having us this evening. Uh, I'm excited about you talking about the ordinance and trying to adapt in a better way. Uh, my one thing I'm going to talk about that some people haven't, I don't believe, is the enforcement of the towing when it's happening. Um, we see, I see towing nightly. I'm a business owner on 2nd Avenue and a resident on 1st Avenue. I see towing nightly. I see cars damaged. We had a gentleman Saturday night in the parking lot. They were hooking up his car to tow him and he hadn't even got out of the car yet. This was witnessed by a Birmingham police officer as well. Uh, when, you, when you go to the tow lot on 5th Avenue with the I think the predatory towing company we uh, have the most problems with. It's dark, there's no lights. They ask for your credit card through the chain link fence. They have no name tags. There's no business license visible. And the way they deal with the public is rude and is not any way someone should be spoken to. I, um, as I said, I'm a business owner on 2nd Avenue. And I am seeing one-star reviews for my business when everything that we did was perfect. I had this, 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 and this, but we got towed at the end of the night and will never return. I'm excited about the development in downtown Birmingham. My business has been there eight years. I'm part of the Second Avenue corridor that uh, I'm really excited about. We've been very fortunate with our business, and I hate to see us take a hit when it's not our fault, when we're doing everything we should, and for someone outside of that to come in and run business out of downtown is disheartening to me. So the enforcement part really needs to be looked at and how it's handled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Valuable feedback. Appreciate it. Josh McKinley, is that right? Jack, Jack McKinney, 1415 Third Avenue South. Good evening. Uh, I will keep mine rather short, but I was towed last night. Um, by the parking enforcement systems company. Uh, my complaint is not in regards to me being towed. Uh, my complaint is in regards to the internal signage within the particular lot I was towed in. Um, I personally found the signage to be rather ambiguous. Um, I mistook the signage to be that you don't have to pay outside of the peak hours. Instead, upon looking further into it, I realized I was wrong. Um, that being said, $160 is a very hefty fee for uh, me at this time. And my suggestion would just be in terms of the ordinance internal within the parking lot itself, um, it says explicitly what times not to park there, but it doesn't say explicitly what you need to be paying when you are in there. Um, now, I looked at the 
our, uh, the website online and looked at, I believe I looked at the ordinance. It said 2004, but I'm not sure if that's outdated or not. Um, and I saw something about the internal signage being required to have a uh, price on it or some sort of a rate on it. Um, I did not see any indication of um, what the price was for the parking ticket uh, or for parking in that lot. Um, the only other side comment I'll make, and this is in regard, I, I find this interesting. The parking lot was not very full. Um, there was not an issue with people being able to get into the parking lot, uh, yet I was still towed. And again, I technically did not pay during a time I needed to pay, and I admit fault for that. But for the sake of our community, I wish we would make the signs a bit more clear. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Nicholas Neal. Good evening, y'all. Um, I'm just here to share this story. Um, I could say I was a victim of predatory towing. Um, I believe that the process for obtaining a license or being able to obtain a tow vehicle should be probably made a little more arduous for whoever it is that's going out doing this type of business. Um, I had a vehicle that I bought from a good friend of mine. Uh, pre prior to that, I've been trying to get my driver's license back, get off of the public bus line, so I finally got a car. It just needed a motor. It needed a new motor. It needed work done on it, and it sat out front of my house for a while. And I'm closer and closer to getting to this, um, but I come home one day, and the car is gone. Uh, we have cameras outside of, we have cameras on our house, and um, my father was to tell me that he couldn't see who it was who uh, was towing this vehicle but it was a tow truck. I mean, it got towed, the whole car is gone. So I don't know what the ordinances are. I've just felt like I saw this uh, on Mayor Woodman's uh, Instagram that they already have to me and I just felt like it would be important for me to share my story. Um, yeah, I guess that's just about it. Okay. Um, so I think in that situation, that's uh, more along, I did not share the fact that I did report this to the police and everything, and even went to Will Record. Nobody had any record of this. So I don't know who it was who had a tow truck to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I don't know like how that process even goes and who's able to get access to tow trucks. And I live on the west side of town, and I see them all over the place. Some of them I don't even think say Will Record on them. So, okay. yeah. yeah. So I think in that situation, that's more along the lines of uh, interoperable vehicle. Um, so I can't quote you the ordinance, but basically uh, in the city of Birmingham, you know, the, we have the capacity to tow interoperable vehicles. They do have to be um, appropriately stickered. So there's a, a warning, you know, that happens ahead of that. Um, but there, there may be multiple ordinances that came into play in your particular situation, so I would encourage you to, you know, uh, follow up with the mayor's office to try and find out what specifically, you know, the, the cause for the tow was in there. Um, all right, so we're at the end of the list. Um, I think we've gotten a lot of valuable feedback. Um, again, this is a ongoing uh, conversation. I expect that they'll, after tonight's meeting, the attorneys will um, make additional tweaks based on what we've heard tonight, and um, those changes will ultimately be presented um, in one of the committees, uh, council committees, and, and at some point, hopefully in the near future, um, we'll
it was very valuable, and I think I can say for all of us who attended this meeting to hear this information. I do want to acknowledge other councilors that have joined us after we made introductions, and that's Councilor Valerie Abbott from District 3, and Councilor Franklin Wood from District 1, and Madam Pro Tem from District 6. Um, as Dr. O'Quinn has said, I also would like to thank our Office of the City Attorney and Ms. Bernard for working to um, look at the ordinances and to make them more reasonable and uh, language and I think we've heard tonight some valuable information uh, that we can take away and that some of that that you are already working with. So as Dr. O'Quinn has already said, this is an ongoing uh, process. Uh, we'll go back and take into consideration the information that you share. We'll work again with the uh, Office of the City Attorney to get drafts uh, of those items. And then I will ensure that we go through the particular committee process so that we can get that in front of the council. Thank you again. We appreciate you for coming. And at this time, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you very much.